Hello, good morning, students. I welcome you on our next lecture for the differential gear mechanism. So, in the past lectures, we have seen about how an automobile steering works and what are the different uh, criteria for the crash testing. So, today we will be looking into uh, the differential gear mechanism. So, the diagram that you can see in front of you, it's a very basic diagram. We will be looking into the functioning of it later on but you can use this diagram while uh, you are drawing and explaining during your exam if you have to draw because it's a very simple diagram two dimensional diagram you can just draw it and you can explain it so before we go into the differential gear mechanism i want to show you a small video okay it's a very old video okay maybe i guess 80 years old video but it explains the differential gear mechanism very easily okay and let me tell you one thing in this differential gear mechanism is purely mechanical device and it's very interesting so i want you to watch this video first the man on the outside has to ride a lot farther and a lot faster in order to keep up with the parade the outside wheels must spin faster than the wheels on the inside because they have a greater distance to travel in the same length of time. When a wagon turns a corner, the wheels can travel at different speeds because each one can turn freely on the axles. And in the early automobiles, the rear wheels turn separately and only one wheel was connected to the engine. But when only one wheel was driven by the engine, it had to do all the work, and it couldn't get a good enough grip on the road to do its job properly. So the one-wheel drive was soon out of date. But if two wheels are locked on an axle so that they are not free to turn separately, one or the other has to slide. So engineers had to find a way to connect both rear wheels to the engine without sliding and slipping on turns. The device which makes this possible is a part of the rear axle. It is called the differential because it can drive the rear wheels at different speeds. The differential looks complicated, but once we understand its principle, it is amazingly simple. These two wheels are mounted on separate axles and supported by a frame so that they can revolve freely at different speeds. Let's fasten a spool on the inner end of each axle so that by turning the spokes we can turn each wheel separately. With a bar or cross piece we can turn both wheels in the same direction at the same rate of speed. Let's get something to hold this bar in place so that it will press against the spokes. Notice that this support is not locked to the axle. It turns freely. Now we can spin the wheels by rotating the support. This is fine as long as both wheels are able to turn at the same speed. But let's see what happens when we go around the corner. With this arrangement, we cannot drive one wheel faster than the other. And if we stop one wheel, the other wheel won't budge. Let's put this bar on a pivot so that it can swing in either direction. Now, the bar can still turn both wheels at the same speed. And because it pivots, it lets one wheel turn even when the other is stopped. But if turned too far, the bar will swing around until it won't drive the spokes that turn either wheel. We need another crossbar and more spokes to carry on the job. When we stop one wheel, the crossbars will continue to push the spokes of the free wheel around. As long as both wheels are free to turn, 
the bars do not swing on their pivot, and the wheels move at the same speed. Now we have the working principles of a differential. To adapt the model for use in an automobile, we will have to make a few changes. In order to reduce the jerky action caused by wide spaces between the spokes, we will put in more spokes. Further filling in the spaces between the spokes gives steadier, more continuous action, and changing the shape gives firm, constant contact. Now we can make the gears thicker and stronger, and we have differential gears. The edges are cut so that they will fit together more smoothly and silently, and another gear is added to share the work of driving the axles. The principle is the same. In order to turn the support and drive the wheels, we can fasten a large gear here, connected by a smaller gear to a source of power. Notice that the power is connected to the differential at the center line. We can make our model more compact by moving the gears closer together. When we put our differential in an automobile, we have to leave room for the drive shaft, which carries the power from the engine. We may build the floor of the car above the drive shaft. But if we do, we won't have much room inside unless we make the top of the car high too. Of course, we could lower the floor and ceiling, but the drive shaft would be higher than the floor. This would have disadvantages. A shaft in the middle of the floor of an automobile would be inconvenient for passengers and would be awkward for carrying luggage. Today, engineers have found a way to make the car roomier and closer to the road without a clumsy shaft above the floor. The drive shaft from the engine to the differential is lowered out of the way, and the drive shaft is connected to the rear axle at the bottom. The new low center drive makes the rear axle quieter, stronger, and more durable because it gives better, smoother contact between the gears. The automobile of today with the low center drive is stronger and more rugged. Every part of the rear axle has been built to withstand strains far greater than it will ever meet on the straightaway or around the corner. So I think that now you have understood that uh, how this automobile differential works. It's a very old video, but I have taken it because it explains the differential in a very easy manner. Okay, so in the last of the video, you have seen that how they are, uh, you know, how they are rolling on these drums. Okay, these drums are connected to the wheel. Okay, one person has to move uh, at a higher speed and other is supposed to move at a lower speed. So this is what a differential does and it's a very important part of your automobile be it your car be it your truck or any other vehicle you need a differential otherwise you know you cannot uh, run a car as you can see it's a very old video around 80 years back uh, they have shot this video so uh, you can understand that how old this technology is and uh, you know still we find application of differential i have one more video and it, it, that video is actually you know bit more clear and it will explain how it works okay because this is just the principle we have seen now we'll see that how it works okay i have one more video so, so just we'll just play this video yes drive shaft 
main function of the differential is to allow these wheels to turn at different RPM while receiving power from the engine. Consider these wheels which are negotiating a turn. It is clear that the left wheel has to travel more distance compared to the right wheel. This means the left wheel has to rotate at a higher speed. If these wheels were connected using a solid shaft as shown, the wheels would have to slip to accomplish the turn. This is exactly where the differential came. The ingenious mechanism in a differential allows left and right wheels to turn at different RPM while transferring power to both wheels. We will learn how differential achieves this in a step-by-step -step manner using its simplest configuration. Power from the engine is transferred to the wing gear through a pinion gear. The ring gear is connected to a spider gear, which is at the heart of the differential. Spider gear is free to make two kinds of rotation, one along with the ring gear, and second on its own axis. Spider gear is meshed with two side gear. So, power from the engine flows from the pinion to the left and right wheels as shown. Now let's consider different cases. The vehicle moves straight. In this case, spider gear rotates along with the wing gear, but does not rotate on its own axis. Spider gear will push and make the side gears turn, and both will turn at the same speed. Or when the vehicle is moving straight, spider side gear assembly will move as a single solid unit. Now consider the case when the vehicle is taking a right turn. The spider gear plays a pivotal role here. Along with the rotation of the ring gear, it rotates on its own axis. So the spider gear is having a combined rotation. The effect of combined rotation on the side gear is interesting. When properly meshed, side gear has to have the same peripheral velocity as that of the spider gear. When the spider gear is spinning, as well as rotating, peripheral velocity at the left side of spider gear is sum of spinning and rotational velocity. But at right side, it is difference of the two or left side gear will have higher speed compared to the right side gear. This is the way the differential manages to turn left and right wheels at different speeds. While taking a left turn, the spider gear will spin in the opposite direction. In order to carry load, one more spider gear is usually added. Four spider gear arrangement is also used for heavy load vehicles. Apart from allowing wheels to rotate at different RPM, the differential has got two more functions. First is speed reduction at pinion ring gear assembly. This will result in torque multiplication. The other function is to turn the power flow direction by 90 degrees. The differential we have gone through so far is known as open or standard differential. It is capable of turning wheels at different RPM, but it has got one major drawback. So now you have seen that how a, a differential works. Okay. So this is uh, using animation. Okay, they have used uh, they have used an uh, you know uh, some software and they have uh, shown it properly. So you should understand that there is a pinion, there is a ring gear, and the spider gear is the most important element. 
so you know these two uh, and they are you know how they are allowing one wheel to move at a higher speed and another wheel to move at a lower speed okay so this is uh, about uh, a differential okay now what we will do we will just go into the theory some of the theory because you know uh, you you need to write something okay you have understood the thing but uh, whenever if someone is asking you and if you want to write something then you then you need then you need some theory material to write down so we'll just go to that okay so we'll start with the automobile differential what is the use of differential so as i have told you that the differential is used when we want to turn one wheel and more and another wheel less so whenever we are taking a turn okay one wheel will be moving at a higher speed and and the other wheel will be moving at the lower speed so that can be done using an differential okay and differential is a very important element suppose if you don't have a differential at the rear end of your vehicle so what will happen okay in order to take a turn one wheel has to slip okay see the same thing we have seen in your steering mechanism also that for a perfect steering there is a pure rolling there is no slipping okay and the same thing is there suppose if there is no differential then there will be slipping uh, one wheel has to slip then only they can take a turn so this is a very very important thing so a differential is a mechanical device capable of transmitting torque and make rotation through three shafts one as input and other two are as output for different speed as vehicle makes a turn the differential allows each of the driving wheel to rotate at different speed while applying equal torque to each of them this is the most important thing the differential is found on all modern cars and trucks and also in many all wheel drive vehicles so suppose if you have all wheel drive vehicles then you need two differential at the front side of the vehicle and the at the rear side of the vehicle okay so this is the diagram so but at the starting of the video i have given you a diagram that is a two dimensional diagram suppose if you want to draw in your notebook or if you want to draw in your exam you can use the diagram and you can write theory from the things that you are watching now so what is the purpose so a vehicle wheels rotate at different speeds mainly when turning corners the differential is designed to drive a pair of wheels with equal torque while allowing them to rotate at different speeds in vehicles without a differential such as racing motor both driving wheels are forced to rotate at same speed usually on a common axle driven by a simple chain drive when cornering the inner wheel needs to travel a shorter distance okay if you note this point then the outer wheels so with no differential the result is the inner wheel spinning or the outer wheel dragging and this results in difficult unpredictable handling damage to tires and roads okay so this was the application or we can say the use of a differential this is uh, some history okay you can just pause the video and you can read it if you want i will just post the pictures on the group also so then you can read it okay this is just for your information okay these are not that much important but you you, you should go go through it okay because one important thing is there in this history is that you know when ackermann steering was invented okay rudolf ackermann of germany so you have studied about the ackermann steering mechanism so you can just understand in 1810 it means that around 210 years back they have invented this uh, mechanism okay steering mechanism so still it finds use okay even after 200 years so you can just imagine that uh, you know suppose you can uh, that how these inventions are you know how much important they are okay so in 1958 this uh, torsen dual drive differential is also invented okay and it's patented so it's a, it will be an assignment question for you that what is a torsion dual drive differential and what is a limited slip or slip differential okay so you have to do it and you have to submit it as an assignment 
so uh, now we'll come to the parts of a differential okay so in this you can see the first one is pinion gear okay pinion gear is the power that is coming from the engine and then the next thing that you have is a ring gear okay the ring gear it is rotating so the power is getting transmitted at 90 degree okay so this is the most important thing of the ring gear and then you have a spider gear the spider gear is attached to the ring gear okay so you know see they have written all the parts pinion drive gear it transfers power from drive shaft to the ring gear mainly having helical gears on it okay so it is having a helical gear so we have studied about the gears so then the ring gear or the crown wheel okay ring gear transfers power from pinion gear to the differential gear assembly ring gear reduces the gear ratio that helps in increasing the torque value this is the most important point it is increasing the torque crown wheel and pinion gear are meshes with hypoid gear orientation a hypoid gear is a style of spiral bever gear whose main variance is that mating gear axis do not intersect the hypoid gear is offset from the gear center allowing unique configuration and large diameter shaft the teeth on a hypoid gear are helical and the pitch surface is best described as a hyperboloid and then your spider gear spider gears are connected at the end of the cross pin that transfers power from ring gear to side gear the spider gear lies at the heart of the differential and special special mention should be made about its rotation the spider gear is free to make two kinds of rotation one along with the ring gear rotation and the second on its own axle okay i'll just repeat it you should listen to it carefully the spider gear can make two kinds of rotation okay one along with the ring gear and the second on its own axle okay so this is very very important because this is the main gist and this is the main we can say uh, the heart of the mechanism okay how one wheel is moving at a higher speed and the other wheel is moving at the lower speed because of this spider gear only so here you can see uh, the basic component of a standard differential you can see again uh, crown wheel is there okay and the spider gear is there and uh, uh, see this uh, this entire assembly is there you, now you can understand a little bit so now this diagram is very important possible rotations of spider gear so what this spider gear is doing it is spinning and it is rotating okay so there is a combination of both the things so this is very important so these are the some of the other parts side and arm gear differential case assembly okay so these are the functional description of uh, the differential so the differential operation okay so what it will do so there are uh, three conditions okay in any car there are three conditions either it will move in a straight line path either it will go towards the right either it will go towards the left so we'll just look into them uh, one by one so this is very interesting see the vehicle moves in straight direction so most of the time vehicle is going straight only so in this condition both right and left wheel have to travel same distance so speed is same speed is required input torque is applied to ring gear which turns the entire carrier providing torque to both side gears okay which in turn may drive the left and right wheels so see you can see that they have made a small cross on this uh, Uh, spider gear so what this so it means that when the vehicle is going straight this gear is only rotating along with your wheel okay there is no rotation of that uh, we can say the spider gear so because of that the vehicle is going straight if the resistance of both wheel is equal this is the most important thing the spider gear the green one with the cross does not spin and both wheels turn at same speed the spider gear rotates along the ring gear but does not rotate on its own axis okay so suppose if the vehicle is going in the straight line you should note one thing 
that the ring gear does not rotate on its own axis okay it will only rotate with the pinion so the spider gear will push and make both the side gears turn and both will turn at same speed in short when the vehicle moves straight the spider gear assembly will move as a single solid unit i hope that it is uh, you are able to clearly understand it if you don't understand it what you have to do you have to just write down ask your question in the youtube comment section then i will be answering those questions okay at the same time we are planning uh, to conduct a zoom meeting also after this class so that if you have any doubt you can ask me so i'll just again explain you suppose the vehicle is going in a straight line there is a spider gear the spider gear will not rotate on its own axis okay it will be rotating because the pinion is rotating okay suppose if that spider gear is not rotating on its own axis so then the direct power will be getting transmitted to the side gear okay and then your wheels will be rotating now what will happen if your vehicle is going to take a right turn so now consider the case when the vehicle is taking a right turn in this case a certain amount of tension would build up when cornering as the outside wheel tries to rotate quicker than the inside wheel due to the bigger arc of travel the spider gear plays a pivotal role in this case along with the rotation of ring gear it rotates on its own axis so the spider gear is has a combination combinational rotation here during a right turn left wheel have to travel more than the left then the left wheel so there is some mistake uh, during the right turn left wheel has to travel more than the right wheel okay so the speed or required to left wheel is more when properly matched the side gear has to have the same see suppose if this is the condition vehicle is turning so this the speed of the left wheel will be more than the right wheel okay so now what will happen the peripheral velocity of the spider gear when the spider gear is spinning as well as rotating peripheral velocity on the left side of the spider gear is the sum of the spinning and rotation so you should understand this thing that there is this uh, yellow one is the spider gear so what will happen when your vehicle is turning okay when your vehicle is turning you can see this left wheel has to travel at a higher distance okay uh, the the speed is more so what will happen though the when the spider gear is spinning as well as rotating the peripheral velocity on the left hand side of the gear is the sum of the spinning and rotation so because of that the left hand side one will move at a higher speed okay and on the right hand side side gear will move at the lower speed on the right hand side it is a difference of the two since the spin velocity is on the opposite direction of this side okay so now what will happen when vehicle takes a left turn now consider the case when vehicle is taking a left turn here the right wheel have to travel more distance than left wheel this is just the opposite that requires more rotational speed of the wheel in this case the speed of spider gear is in opposite direction as compared to previous case so see this is the diagram okay traveling distance of wheels and direction of rotation of spider wheel during a left turn suppose if your vehicle is taking a left turn so then uh, your right wheel have to move a higher distance so now what will happen so you can just uh, understand that the entire concept will be reversed so the speed of the right sun gear will move because of the sum of spinning and rotational velocity of spider gear and contrast to the left side gear so this means that right side gear will have higher speed compared to the left side gear okay this is because of the sum of the rotational and the spinning velocity so this is the use of the spider gears okay this is uh, you can use two spider gears you can use four also if you are using a heavy duty vehicle okay and then these are the other functions of the differential apart from allowing the wheel to rotate a different rpm differential has two more function first is speed reduction at pinion ring gear assembly this is achieved by using ring gear which is having about uh, uh, having almost 4 to 5 times number of teeth as that of uh, the pinion gear such huge gear ratio will bring down the speed of the ring gear 
in the same ratio. Since the power flow at the pinion and ring gear are the same, such a speed reduction will result in a high torque multiplication. This is the most important one specialty of ring gear. They are hypoid gears. The hypoid gears have more contact area compared to other gears, gear pairs, and will make sure that the gear operation is smooth. The other function of the differential is to turn the power flow direction by 90 degree. I have discussed, I have discussed this thing uh, before also, in which the power is transmitted to differential by main shaft and the power further transmitted to rear axle that are mounted 90 degree to the main shaft. Okay, so uh, this is the diagram again. Uh, see, this is the two dimensional diagram. You have seen uh, uh, all the diagrams and all the videos, but suppose if you want to draw in two dimensional, suppose if anyone is asking you, please draw and explain a differential gear mechanism. So, you need a two dimensional diagram. Okay, you cannot draw those diagrams. So, at uh, that point of time, you can just draw this diagram, you can refer this diagram. Okay, some notations are different, but you will be able to understand completely that uh, what are these notations. You, you can relate that what are these and those notations that you have seen in the uh, video. So, this is for the differential. Uh, thank you.